In our last two videos, we focused on what's going on in spring and also what's happening in the plant world in early spring. And I don't know if you can tell or if you've noticed when you're walking around in your own neighborhoods and looking out the window, but a lot has changed since those videos were released. A lot of the flowers that we talked about in our spring wildflowers video are no longer in in bloom uh, and have almost seemingly disappeared as they blend in with the rest of the greenery that has joined us uh, here in the month of May. May is one of the busiest times of the year uh, when it comes to changes that are happening and sometimes it's hard to keep track of all that's going on. Uh, but today we are going to focus instead of on plants and changes in spring We're going to see what's going on in the animal world And I know a lot of you will be quite excited about what we have to share with you in the video Some of the animals that we'll be showing you today are animals that hopefully some of you have maybe even been Observing in your own neighborhoods or when you're out for walks in local parks So how about we get right to it? Let's jump into this week's video and see what animals are up to in spring when we think about amphibians in spring, we think about frogs and salamanders and toads that are laying their eggs in water. And their eggs can look like this. But the amphibian that I want to share with you today is actually a terrestrial amphibian. And it lays its eggs on land, underneath debris on the forest floor or underneath logs. And so, when I'm searching for these salamanders, I will turn over a log and I will look underneath to see if uh, I can see uh, a red back salamander living or hiding underneath. Let's take a look underneath this log. I'm going to turn it over very carefully and I want you to start looking for that shiny dark gray salamander that might be camouflaged underneath the log. The red-back salamander has spent the winter hibernating here underneath logs and leaf litter in the forest floor and then once the spring warms it will start to move around and look for food. It'll eat insects, spiders, worms and other small invertebrate that live underneath these logs. We want to be sure when we're picking up the salamander always to pick it up from the belly, and to avoid grabbing onto its legs or its tail. And that's because the salamander has a really cool adaptation where if a predator comes along and grabs it by the tail to eat it, it can drop its tail off and its tail will flop away in one direction and the salamander can scurry away and find protection. So it allows it to stay safe from predators. We don't really want to injure the salamander like that because it takes a lot of energy to grow back a limb or a tail so we want to be careful and always touching them by uh, the belly and making sure that we have uh, hands that are free of bug spray and chemicals so that we're not passing that on to the salamander. Now we always want to make sure that we turn it back over when we're done and if we do find anything under we're gentle with it. Now today underneath this log I, I found two red back sal salamanders and these salamanders are in their gray phase. The red back salamander can have a gray phase and a red phase and they were using this log as shelter. It's nice and moist underneath and maybe they were even getting ready to uh, lay eggs. They have a unique behavior. Once they've laid their eggs they'll actually guard their eggs which is different from other amphibians. So when you're out in the forest during spring, if you have a place where there are, are logs uh, on the ground and that you can roll over and look underneath, you might find uh, this terrestrial amphibian that's uh, hiding or living underneath them. One of the distinguishing characteristics of mammals is that they give birth to their young live. And in the spring, it's a very busy time for these animals as they birth and raise their young. The first one we're going to take a look at is the white-tailed deer. So white-tailed deer mate in the fall and about seven months later in the spring, they give birth to their young. So they usually give birth to between one and three small deer, which we call fawn. 
The fawn when they're born have a brownish reddish fur with many white spots up to 300 spots on them and they only weigh about six pounds. They are very weak and wobbly but within about an hour they can stand and walk and within about five days they can outrun even a human. Although fawns are typically alone, curled up and camouflaged, they do get out sometimes and follow closely behind their protective mother. So the doe may be leading this fawn to a new site to bed down, or they may be out to browse on the tree saplings as the fawn takes its first bite of food around three or four weeks old. The next animal we're going to take a look at are coyotes. Coyotes mate in the late winter around January or February and about 60 days later they give birth to their young. They'll usually have about four to seven pups and when they're born for the first couple of weeks they are completely blind so they can't see and they have a light brown fur on them. Coyotes birth and raise their young in a den. Coyote pups drink milk from their mother for about the first month and then after that they're actually given regurgitated food to help them grow stronger. The next animal we're going to take a look at is the red fox. So the red fox, similar to the coyote, mates in the late winter and about 50 days later it gives birth to its young. So generally the female fox or the vixen will give birth to about five or six kits, which are the young, uh, but they've been known to give birth to up to 12. So when they are born, the young fox or the kit has a light grey fur with a pink nose, but within a couple of weeks their true fur colors will come through and their nose will darken. When born, they are blind for the first couple of weeks and mum or the vixen stays very close to them to keep them warm because their body temperature can't really regulate itself so mum needs to be really close by. The male fox or the dad will go out and catch food and bring it back. So while the young fox or the kits are nursing from their mother, they too as well will have food regurgitated to them. Five or six weeks after birth, the fox kits are ready to emerge from the den. They don't venture too far though, they want to stay safe and stay within close sight of the den. They're very playful at this stage. They will practice hunting by play fighting with each other, or even tossing up and chewing a dead animal that was brought back to them. At three or four months old, they become a little bit more cautious and they aren't playing around as much. And then by the autumn, they're ready to head out on their own. Some fox at that point will travel quite far where they'll spend the rest of their life and others will stay rather close to the den that they were birthed in. So I'm in my neighborhood, a place I can walk to from my home. And I want to talk about some of the mammals that I have been able to see. And uh, almost every day when I'm out and about, I at least see them in some stage. And I'm talking about, first of all, squirrels. I see gray squirrels every day. In fact, they, they come into my yard. They're lounging on the fence sometimes. They're in a tree. And in my neighborhood, they have constructed this nest if you remember back to when we talked about squirrel drays, this is a squirrel dray or a leaf nest up in the top of this elm tree. I've been watching it closely because the female squirrel has been pretty protective of it lately. And she'll go out and get food, but when she comes back, she really defends this leaf nest. And generally, gray squirrels aren't very territorial. Because they're active all winter, they, they breed between December and February. And then the young develop inside their mother for the next six weeks. When they're born, they're hairless and blind and really helpless. 
and they feed for that first month they're feeding on just their mother's milk. Squirrel babies are referred to as kittens and sometimes when the mother gives birth she may need to move those kittens from the place where she gave birth to another safe location. You can see them going by with a baby in their mouth as they transport them from one spot to another. After about a month they, they do, they've grown their hair, their eyes have opened and they move around a bit. They might even start to come out of the den or the shelter that they're currently in. Another month after that and they're active and they're out and about. But I have noticed now that the young kittens are out and they're starting to go out from this dray and forage. So they're getting food on their own. And in a, a couple more months, they'll be off on their own. They'll be even kind of kicked out of their home area. Another mammal that I have noticed here in my neighborhood, just in yards and along the trails, is the Eastern Cottontail. And remember, they're active all winter also, same as the squirrels. And they're breeding about the same time, just in the new year, in January. Um, in February. The young rabbits are also called kits and they develop much quicker than the squirrels do. They spend about a month developing inside their mother before they're born. But they're born in a very similar state. They're essentially they're hairless, blind, and unable to hop at that point. But their development is faster. So within the first 10 days or so they'll get their hair, their eyes will open, be able to move around, and within two weeks they can go out from their nest. Now I say nest loosely because eastern cottontails tend to just kind of scrape out a place on the ground. They might do it in, in a field or a forest edge, even in the middle of a yard. In fact, here's a good video showing you what it might look like. So they'll clear out some of the grass, uh, make a depression there, line it with fur that they've taken from their own body, and that's where they'll give birth. And they may have four or five kits at one time. Uh, when the mother gives birth, she will leave and go feed for the day, but she kind of covers them up and hides them until she comes back at night and that's when they would feed. Uh, and they stay in that nest until they're able to move off on their own. Within four or five weeks of their birth, the young kits are weaned again from their mother. So they'll be feeding with her and within six months they'll be adults and they'll be breeding already and giving birth to their first litters. Keep your eyes open in your neighborhood and look out for those baby squirrels up in the trees in, in small groups and maybe even in the grassy areas. Pretty soon we'll start to see some eastern cottontail families out there too. Have fun. The North American wood duck is a plant eater that likes to make its homes in holes in old trees. They choose secluded swamps or beaver ponds that provide everything they need to raise their young. Females will often return to the sites where they hatched only a year after they were born. They will lay 8 to 15 dull white or cream colored eggs and they sit on them and incubate for 28 to 30 days. That means that most wood ducks don't hatch until June in eastern Canada. These ducks will then spend 8 to 9 weeks hunting for food after leaving the nest. Canadian geese are often found in wetlands like ponds or lakes, but they typically spend more time on land than they do in the water. Did you know that Canadian geese mate for life? They also breed earlier in the spring so that the food that their goslings are eating have the highest nutritional value possible. A Canada goose tends to lay five to seven eggs and sits on them or incubates them for 25 to 28 days. Goslings can leave the nest two to three days after being born and can swim, walk, and hunt by the time they leave their nest. Canadian geese will often walk several kilometers in just a few days to reach the area where they would like to raise their young. In six to nine weeks after being born, Canadian geese learn to fly. And did you know that the goslings will stay with their parents for a full year? It's pretty adorable watching these little ones learn the ways of the world. So as you can see, spring is an extremely busy time of year in the animal world. Um, it's the time when we'll observe more changes than at any other time of year, probably more activity than any other time of the year. And we didn't even get a chance to touch on a fraction of the creatures that live here within the Ottawa region. Now, a lot of the creatures that we got to meet today often live in places that are less populated by humans. They might be out in parks, 
uh, off to the side of the city or out in places like McSkimming and the Bill Mason Center. But uh, that being said, a lot of creatures do live and coexist with us within the city limits. So even fox, um, you know, you can spot their dens within the Canada area and I'm sure in other places throughout the city. Birds are incredible creatures to be able to observe as they come back and move into maybe uh, nests that are in our decks or our balconies um, and trees that are in our yard. And I hope some of you have already had the opportunity to observe some of those creatures as well. Now a note on birds, uh, because this is the time of year where many of them are still building nests, but also uh, migrating back to this region. Um, window collisions are a huge thing uh, that we should be looking out for when it comes to birds. Uh, in order to help prevent them from having collisions with our windows in migration seasons in spring and fall, we can make decals on the windows or have the reflecting CDs, something hanging in the window, close your blinds so that they do not have collision with windows um, and harm themselves. And I also wanted to just uh, make you aware, if you're not already, that we have this incredible resource here within the city of Ottawa called the Wild Bird Care Centre. And so if you do find an injured bird at any point, or maybe a baby bird that's fallen out of our nest, uh, out of a nest, this is an incredible resource. You can give them a call. Um, birds can be taken to their centres that are injured um, and rehabilitated so that they can get back uh, into the wild and living a good life. If you have questions about any of the animals that we talked about today or any other animals that live here within the Ottawa region, we would love to hear your questions. And if you get them to us before Friday, May 28th, we will try to answer them in the upcoming video that will be released the following week. Uh, you can find a Google form in the description box below this video. Uh, your teachers can fill this out if you have questions. I would just like to say on behalf of the whole team, thank you again for joining us and following along with what's going on in the centers locally and seasonally, and we hope to see you again next week. Everyone stay safe, get outside, and enjoy this beautiful spring weather.